So we will s- Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro, the woman entertainer here, the most inspirational woman in all of Asia here, back once again, it's Tom and Jerry Saints, I'm recording this on Thursday, so I'm going to be busy editing for the rest of the day to get all this up in time for the weekend, because I'm going to be down in Bristol as of Friday, so by the time this goes live I'm going to be halfway through my, I'm going to be essentially halfway through my weekend down in Bristol, uh, but I'll be back up on Tuesday morning, it'll be business as usual, I'll have a... I'll have a couple of um, I'll have a couple of music covers up for then. Uh, I'll have a music cover on Monday as well. Anyway, anyway, here we go. Tom and Jerry sins. This one's entitled "The Bowling Alley Cat." Uh, I mentioned that I uh, I mentioned that Paige would be here as well, but sadly, due to time constraints, uh, she wasn't able to stay long enough to be able to get the um, to do the Tom and Jerry sins with me. But nevertheless, onwards we shall soldier. Onwards to victory! Let's get started. And as always, usual singing rules apply, so let's get started. Straight out of the gate, they've gone back to the original music. Where's the theme we know? Okay, um... Right, hang on. Alley kit. Thomas O'Malley, O'Malley the Alley Cat. Okay, very clever. I'll give them that credit where it's due. Very clever. Uh, using alley as in bowling alley and alley as in alley cat. Very clever to put the two together. I'll take a sin off for that. So that means we're back down to net zero. The alley's very quiet. Uh, the, the bowling alleys are very quiet. So why would Jerry, and later Tom, still be there? Because this gives the impression that they stayed behind after the place closed. And another thing. Why were none of the other bowling balls numbered, but yet the one at the end was? Jerry having fun on a discount ice rink. Yes, bowling alleys are meant to be very slippery. We interrupt Tom and Jerry to bring you the Sleeping Beauty Ballet! Tom breaking the fourth wall by looking at the camera with a very menacing look on his face to tell us he has a plan to uh, interrupt Jerry, cliché. <laughs> and thus demonstrating the value of watching where you're going. No. Your ears would be right back into position after that. Not having to adjust them. Can Jerry not tell that he is walking right underneath Tom? Surely his peripheral vision isn't that bad. He looks at the tail and this Passes it off as if it's nothing. Stopping yourself from being eaten in the nick of time, cliche. Tom's eyes would not be that powerful to hypnotize you, Jerry. Minus the one, minus the one section of hair that's still sticking up, how on earth does he manage to get the tail in the exact same position it was in before? Why, Tom? You always let him get away! Surely from the fact that you saw Jerry ice skating earlier on a slippery a uh, bowling alley, surely you should have known that the alley was going to be very slippy! We interrupt Tom and Jerry to bring you Bambi! Oh... Too soon? No. Jerry's breath would not be that strong to be able to knock Tom back off his feet and back to square one. 
no, Jerry, you're not that strong. That would result in some pretty bad... whatever the equivalent of uh, carpet burns is on wood. Hmm, that's going to require a lot of cleaning up. Yeah, have fun explaining that one to the youngsters. Also, Tom, with the pipe in your mouth, you are not Popeye the Sailor Man! The look on Tom's face at that particular shot gives you a very rough indication that he is lifting a ball that is way too heavy and therefore he should get a lighter one. But because the bowling balls are not numbered, it's hard to tell which ones are heavy and which ones are light. Unrealistic physics. Character looks up at object about to fall on top of them cliche. Jerry's clearly loving this. A, he's not that strong, and B, he doesn't do the hammer throw, which means C, that should not be possible, which results in D, not being able to fly as far as that. That would result in... I'm gonna call that a strike. That would result in a strike, which would result in the pins being reset, and Jerry nowhere to be seen. Meaning, game over. Why didn't you do that first time around, Jerry? Watch what is coming in front of you. Then you will know where to move to and then take it from there. Also, the pin would have been knocked over, not split in two. More unrealistic physics. Okay, I'll give Tom credit where it's due. I'll give Tom credit where it's due where he managed to somehow get a split, which results in double points. I'll take a sin off for that. Well played, Tom. Tom, you're not playing baseball. You're playing bowling. Okay. A. The pin would not split like that. B. It would have taken Jerry with him it after being hit and see did jerry not hear me when i said tom you're not playing baseball <laughs> long build up for object hitting character for bigger damage cliche also more unrealistic physics. Also, how did he get from the seats in what appeared to be a small crowd to that area just like that? No, Tom, the bowling ball would not balance on your head. And apart from that, why would you have a bowling ball on your head after it just hit you on said head? The fact that you had to twist your thumb to get it into the hole tells us it's going to be a very bad sign. See what I mean? The Tom and Jerry animators especially in the sound department, somehow managed to get the sound of a V10 Formula 1 engine almost 50 years before they happened! <laughs> Covering your eyes, Jerry, that was not going to stop the inevitable impact of another impressive strike from Tom. So, a sin for Jerry covering his eyes, but a sin off for, t for the... For the strike, which results in net zero. Okay, moving on. Really? You're gonna have the strike sound effect 
where you're setting up the pins. That's bad sound design, guys. Very bad sound design. Character molded into shape only to spring back to normal shape cliche. Oh no, look out! It's the Bowling Ball Express! Seriously, a train like that does not exist. Also, t Jerry would be run over long before now, meaning game over. No, the bowling balls do not have sense of direction. They go in one direction and one direction only, either down the alley to hit the pins or back the opposite way back into the starting position. They wouldn't do this. Tom, you should know by now that by having your mouth wide open with Jerry running towards it and something chasing behind him, you should know by this point that it is not possible to eat him because he knows what you're trying to do! And apart from that, where did Jerry go? How would he get inside one of those bowling balls, into one of those holes to be exact, how would he get in there while they're chasing him all the way? That would result in your teeth being pulled out, meaning trip to the dentist. No. Just no. That's a trip to the vet for Tom. Jerry, you are not a miniature dog. If you knew it was going to taste bad, why did you bite him in the first place? Jerry would be coming out of the hole relatively easily at this point, given how easily he goes into the hole. Also, you would need to have the other hole covered, because there's three holes in a bowling ball. You would need to cover one hole with possibly your hand or your finger or whatnot, and then blow into the second hole in order for Jerry to come out of the third hole. Tom, why not hold the ball in one hand, cover one of the holes with one of your fingers, and then blow into the second hole, get, getting Jerry out of the third hole, and then catch him. And there you go. Nice and easy. <coughs> Lily didn't listen to me. His foot wouldn't be that flat, but it would require another trip to the hospital because that's at least a broken bone in the foot. How did Tom not see that coming? Clearly, Tom should not be able to run that fast because of the damage done to his foot thanks to the bowling ball dropping on it. Did Tom not learn from the previous bowling ball incident? Tom should be feeling that. How does Tom not see Jerry right in front of him? Oh, now you notice him. Well, obviously he's not going to be inside the bowling ball if he's standing right in front of you. Wow, way to rub insult to injury, Jerry. Right. This is where the really unrealistic physics come into play because that's one hit on Tom already. Let's see how many hits it takes and then add that to the same count. Two. Yeah, Tom's tail's not stretching that far. Three, four, five. No. Tom would either be pulled back based on the unrealistic physics here, or he would be stuck where that bowling ball is, meaning no progress. Six. Right. 
Let's take a sin off for the strike. But put the sin back on for the crash through the brick wall, which would result in another trip to the bed because that would not be possible. And a broken nose from going into the pole and going into the trash can. Okay, Jerry, hold up just a second. On frame 10, you would have three strikes if you had the perfect game. But based on this, he only got 280 points rather than the perfect 300. So that's a sin against Jerry for not following the rules of the game. And again, second cut, second episode in a row where they don't tell us where it was made. Tom should not be able to run that fast because his foot is clearly still sore from being, from having a blast. Well, there we go. I'm going to have fun editing this. So, yeah, with that in mind, uh, hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter-day Saints notification squad. Part two of yesterday's podcast on the left and on the right, my dedicated Tommy Jerry Sins playlist. So, I'll see you guys again very soon. Have a fantastic day. Peace out and stay faithful.